Okay, consider the fact that a person can be a perpetrator and a victim at the same time. And that's what um, she was. I'm not saying she didn't do anything wrong. She definitely did do something wrong. She hurt other women, which is unacceptable. But you have to consider the fact that she was under duress considerable duress and she was coerced and groomed into this group um so that has to be taken into account before you lay all the blame at the feet of allison mack the what is up guys welcome back to the podcast hope y'all doing well out there in this video we're going to be talking about the Nexium cult, which I've discussed before on the channel, uh, specifically when it comes to the prosecution of Renier, who's basically a living monster, uh, similar to Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein is dead. Um, Renier is unfortunately still alive. So hoping that will change in the future. He is vile. He got women to victimize other women. And one of the victimizers slash victims was the small will actress Allison Mack, who I've also talked about. Now, I was going to do a separate video covering exactly how she got into this thing because she is uh, honestly one of the most honest and like genuine people ever, not just her character in Smallville, but in real life. But despite the fact that she was a very kind person, she was lost in life. And a lot of these Hollywood actors are young and they're lost. They don't feel like they, ha they know the meaning of life and they fall victim to cults like this who promise them meaning and purpose. And a lot of people are looking for that. So this Nexium thing basically was Renier recruiting women uh, to have sex with him, multiple women, um, and uh, convincing them that polygamy was the best way to go and somehow having sex with Rainier was the best way to make their lives better and you know to get tight with the sisterhood so it was a disaster but anyways um uh there was an entire Hollywood Reporter article that I recommend you guys read if you want to know how they brainwashed uh, Allison Mack to join this cult they worked very hard and treated her like a VIP. They rolled out the red carpet to her and um, at one of their meetings and they like slowly but surely groomed her. Uh, the specific people were Renier, Nancy Salzman, Sarah Bronfman. Nancy Salzman was the person who helped Renier from the beginning. They're the real criminals and going after Allison Mack is going after a victim. But nevertheless, you have to do it because Allison Mack also did bad things like hold down women while um, Renier branded them. This whole story, this specific part is about how Allison and Mac helped bring down uh, Rainier by turning over video evidence of him um, basically committing crimes or planning crimes on video. So th they have some excerpts from the video itself. It's bas it's disgusting. It's basically uh, Rainier telling Mac exactly how to brand these women and to make it seem like they're, they're, they like it and they consent. So I'll read you guys just a little bit of this. Oh, uh, let me start here. Renier says, and the person should ask to be branded. Max says, okay, Renier should say, please brand me. It would be an honor or something like that. An honor I want to wear uh, for the rest of my life. I don't know. Uh, Max says, okay. Renier says, and they should probably say that before they're held down. So it doesn't seem like they're being coerced. So this is basically on video of um, him planning his crime. So this was handed over to the feds by uh, Mac. And this is the reason that she's getting a much more lenient sentence as she should because like i said she was a victim of these people um just like the girls but then she also went on to victimize other women so you can't get let her off she's been uh she's been charged with sex trafficking and uh and racketeering i believe yeah so that's what she's being charged with so up until this point this video was under wraps and nobody knew about it other than mac and her lawyers and the government uh but it was recently published in the government documents as you guys can see here and this is the reason she got a lesser charge because she she cooperated with the authorities and gave up the person who's truly responsible, and that's Renier, who's going to jail for a very, very long time. Um, he deserves much worse, like I said, in my opinion, but you know, I'm not the lawgiver. Uh, and this video, I would believe, was a significant reason why uh, Renier went down so hard. Okay, so, um, so this is what the prosecutor says. Citing her assistance, prosecutors want U.S. District Judge Nicholas G. Garifus to sentence her below that, below the 14 to 17 that is uh, recommended by the guidelines. Uh, Max victims are expected to uh, testify during the sentencing hearing, which is normal procedures. So this is how it's going to go. Most likely, she's going to get something like 
five years or, or somewhere around there. That's what I would bet. Um, if I was a judge, I would give her like a year or two years because like I said, I don't see her as some evil criminal. Um, she's, she's a victim herself, but she did do something wrong. So she does have to do some prison time. In my opinion, people might disagree with that. Whatever you want to believe, go ahead. Um, but I don't think she was the true villain here. Like I said, many different times. So the way it's most likely going to go is that Nicholas is going to give her somewhere around five to 10 years. That would be my guess. Uh, but it depends on how moved he is by the victim's testimonies. If the victims say that she was like some evil character and she was the central character, they try to make her out to be just as bad as Rainier, then she's going to get, she's probably going to get a um, hefty sentence, most likely like 10 years uh, on the high end. Uh, but it depends on what the victims say. It depends on what kind of judge this is and his um, record and his personality. So a lot of factors are still uh, in the mix here. So you can't really say, but if I had to guess, I would say she's going to get somewhere between five to 10 years, even if the uh, victim impact statements are harsh um, against her. I, I don't think the judge is going to go that hard because she was the preeminent um, person who was responsible for bringing, helping bring down Rainier. Obviously, there were other pieces of evidence, but she gave them a video of him basically confessing to what he planned and executed, which is, you know, get, bringing all these women, tricking them, promising them meaning and purpose in life, and basically forcing them to have sex with him and branding uh, them like slaves, which is just vile behavior, obviously. And, um, and he got much less than he deserved okay that if the death if anybody deserves a death penalty it's rainier okay he's lucky i didn't knock his teeth down his throat i'd pay real money to see that um, and people like this are the ones who really challenge my uh, my uh, my uh, opposition to the death penalty because I oppose the death penalty because innocent people are in prison and they might be killed. The Innocence Projects uh, routinely frees people from death row that were completely innocent. So we can't have the state executing innocent people. So on practical terms, I'm against the death penalty. But in principle, oh my God, I'm so for it. <laughs> if we know that if we know that somebody's definitely guilty, then I'm, I'm for the death penalty in principle. No deals for anybody. Let's hang them all. Um, I want to I want to also show you guys what kind of person Allison Mack is, um, because I don't want people to think that she's some kind of monster. She's actually just an, just another Hollywood actor who was very susceptible to this whole spirituality nonsense that a lot of these cults present. And I want to let you guys hear so, something that she herself says. So this is from her own words. OK, and I want you guys to hear this. Um, she's speaking about her legacy and the impact that she wants to leave on the world. And this will give you, you know, a clue about what kind of person she was. She wasn't some monster like some people are saying and some people are going to say in the comment section. She's actually a very kind person who was tricked by this guy and uh, and forced to do disgusting things. But nevertheless, you still have to be punished for the things you, things you did uh, for your involvement. So I agree with that, which is why I support her going to prison because law and order means that we have to punish people, even people we might like and we might think are genuinely good people, but they still committed crimes. So we have to punish them for that. That's law and order. Okay, and I genuinely believe in that that uh, equal justice for everybody. But your intent matter. Did, did she plan to victimize these women? No, she didn't. So your so Renier did plan it. He planned it. He planned it and executed it. He got these women who were all, who were victims to victimize other women. He turned women against other women. OK, but that's but she is one of the victims of Rainier. She's not the primary villain in the story. OK, so let's listen to what some of what she had to say here. What do I want my legacy to be? What do I want to be remembered for? These questions are like epic. Uh, what do I want to be remembered? I want to be remembered for my joy. I want to be remembered for my spirit. I want to be remembered for my compassion and my passion. Uh, I want to be remembered for the things that are most important to me. I want to be remembered for um, the way that I impacted people I want to be remembered as a woman who was honest and true and strong and joyful, and committed and loving. I want to be remembered for the relationships I had and for the ways I was able to increase the lightness in the world. So. And, and there are many other videos that she's made. She has her own channel, actually, Allison Mac Official. I watched some of her videos. 
this is not some evil monster. This is somebody who wanted to make a difference in the world and genuinely wanted to empower other women. And that's what this whole thing is about. This this was a women's movement. They they build Nexium as a woman's movement, women's empowerment movement. And they rolled out the red carpet as they outline here in the article exactly how they got they tricked the uh, Allison Mack to join her group. And she was brought to the group by Kristen Crook, who's now going around saying that uh, that sh that Allison Mack somehow tricked tried to recruit her when it was actually Kristen Crook who played Lana Lane on uh, on uh, Smallville, uh, the worst character in the entire series, in my opinion. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, Kristen Crook is the one who actually brought um, Allison Mack to the group. But uh, getting back to Allison Mack, a lot of people it just in life are lost and we're all trying to find our way in the world and uh and and especially people in uh, in hollywood you lose a part of who you are when you have to pretend to be other people for a living and that's what she had to do i'm not making excuses i'm trying to explain to you guys why these cult situations happened like with scientology uh with a lot of people who uh gone into scientology and realized that it's uh, a vile, disgusting cult and wanted to leave, but they wouldn't let you leave. Um, a lot of this, this stuff happens in Hollywood because you lose a part of who you are when you pretend to be other people. And even though you can't truly get rid of your personality, like you, you can see Alison Mack's true personality coming out when she plays um, Chloe Sullivan in Smallville. I think Smallville has a lot to do with why I am the way I am. Uh, the character Chloe influenced me so much in the things that are important to me and the things that I think are possible. He asks, who in real life is closest to the characters in the show? Are you more like Clark or Martha or Chloe? And is Tom more like Lana? I don't know, fill the blanks for me. I think that if I had to choose somebody that I was the most like, it would be Chloe. Um, and I don't know if that's just because I've developed the character for seven years, or so I've ended up being her for over a third of my lifetime, or what it is, but um, I definitely feel like, especially now with the whole... Um, superpower and everything like that that I have that she is probably the closest to me in reality as well. Although we do have a lot of differences. Chloe has much better work ethic than I do. Which is one of the best characters in my opinion in the entire series. But anyways, a lot of these people in Hollywood, they lose a part of who they are because of the things that they have to do. And they are looking for meaning and a way to find themselves again. And and she fell into a very dark place uh, and a very dark group who who basically groomed her to do all these things and to and to convince her that having sex with Renier was the way to attain some kind of meaning in life and to leave a mark and to bring light into the world that like she said in the video that she wants to do so it's very disgusting and vile and people looking from the outside might say oh she is she's just as bad as Renier well, you would be wrong, okay? And that's the difference between uh, understanding uh, a, a victim and a perpetrator. And sometimes somebody can be both. So a lot, a lot of the time, people who become pedophiles were sexually assaulted themselves. And, uh, you know, there's different arguments as to why you become a pedophile. It's somewhat, I think it's somewhat genetic. And uh, sometimes it's driven by trauma. So I think there has to be a susceptibility to that uh, because you don't just decide that, you know, it's great to have sex with kids just because you're abused. A lot of people who are abused turn out, you know, sternly against uh, pedophiles as most people are, but sometimes uh, people who are abused turn into abusers themselves. So it's very complicated. Life is complicated. And uh, the point I'm trying to make is that everybody has to find their own place and their own meaning. And in my opinion, no, most of the time, no religion, no cult, no group of people can help you do that other than yourself. You have to take that journey, take this journey of life yourself and find what is meaningful to you and follow that through in your life. And, you know, sometimes talking to people might help. Sometimes uh, you know, going to a church group or whatever might help you with some things. But in, in my opinion, for me, uh, I am the one who figured things out myself when it comes to my own personal life, right? Um, I never went to anybody for help. I had to find my own goal in life and my meaning and what gives, what, you know, what gets me up in the morning every day. That's something you have to find out yourself. I don't think it personally that anybody else, any, uh, you know, fictional God character or any religion can help you do that. That's my opinion. Other people might disagree with that. Um, but nevertheless, when you try to, you know, try to get uh, external uh, values validation like this, this is the kind of stuff that can happen, especially when you're in this Hollywood circles and you're trying to find meaning. These people are not out there to help you. A Rainier and Bronfman and uh, who was the other one? Salzman. These people are predators and they were looking for rich women like um, like Alison Mack was to come into their group and to extend their reach into Hollywood. And this was just a giant pyramid scheme and a sex cult built by this Rainier guy just to get what he wants, not to give women anything that they want. So there you go, 
guys, that's about it. That's all I got to say for this video. Uh, I'm sure many people are going to disagree with my point of view. That's fine. Um, but just consider it. Okay. Consider the fact that a person can be a perpetrator and a victim at the same time. And that's what um, she was. I'm not saying she didn't do anything wrong. She definitely did do something wrong. She hurt other women, which is unacceptable. But you have to consider the fact that she was under duress considerable duress and she was coerced and groomed into this group um so that has to be taken into account before you lay all the blame at the feet of allison mack the true criminals here are Renier number one, Salzman number two, and Bronfman number three. Okay, those are the top three criminals here, real criminals, hardened criminals. They're the ones who should be, uh, Renier should be getting the death penalty, and the rest of the other two women should be going to jail for the rest of their lives. Allison Mack is a victim more than anything else, but she did victimize other women, so she has to pay for those crimes. And that is the bottom line here. All right, guys, that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, and press all to get all my videos, and to share the video with somebody else you know that you think might enjoy the content. And if you're a regular viewer of my channel and you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can do $1 a month, $5 a month, whatever you think is appropriate. A link will be provided in the end credits and also in the description box below. And if you want to support me on YouTube, you can do so by joining channel memberships down below by clicking the blue join button. And with that being said, I'll see you guys all in my next video. As always, peace.